Folks, we need to talk about Haywood Highsmith. Yes, you heard that correctly. We are not talking about him in as much as we should be as a fan base because he is going to have a massive impact on this Heat team this upcoming season. This is the Heat Report by Chat Sports. I am Nick Roloff. And if you are someone who has Heat friends, families, share this video to them. Help a friend out because they probably need to be educated. And if they're not watching our content, that definitely means you're smarter than them when it comes to Heat basketball. So share the video to them so they can get on your level. And let's get to 24 shares on today's show. We're talking about Haywood Highsmith. Highsmith wears number 24. Let's get 24 shares on the video. All right, before we get into Highsmith more in depth here, remember, he was a free agent this past NBA free agency, and he re-signed with the Heat on a two-year, $11 million deal pretty late in free agency. Many of us, hand up, me included, believed that he was going to leave in free agency and get 8 mil, 9 mil per season because it kind of looked like it was going that way. But evidently, the market for Highsmith wasn't that crazy, and he returns to the Heat on $5.5 million dollars per season over the next two years. And that is just fantastic, tremendous, whatever superlative you want to use, value for Haywood Highsmith. Because even though, yes, he's not the best guy to watch in the box score department, he is such an impactful player and with his defense that having a guy that cheap on this team who needs perimeter defenders and point of attack guys is just absolutely massive. And it helped keep the heat under the second apron as well because it was only getting 5.5 mil per season and the reason why it's so big that Highsmith is back on this roster is because one he has improved every single year of his career every single one and he's the Heat's second best defender like maybe Kalel Ware emerges as that second best guy but to me it's Bam Adebayo number one a tier break to Haywood Highsmith, and then another tier break to like Jimmy Butler and Kalel Ware. But I did mention that he has improved every single year of his career. Well, he's played in the NBA four seasons. He started in Philly in 2019-2020, and it was actually pretty ironic because he was in that game that D. Wade played in his last game where he tried to throw a lob off the backboard for the last time in the Heat's arena, and Highsmith broke it up. Excuse me, that was 2018-2019, not 2019-20, because he was actually out of the league for two years before rejoining the Miami Heat in 2021-2022, and then that's where he started to get in the system, start developing, and then now we saw him last season have a pivotal role for this team where he played in 66 games, shot 40% from three, and had a solid six points. But you see, every time he gets an increased role, he improves his field goal percentage, improves his three-point percentage, improves his scoring per game. The defense has always been there because he's a really good athlete, 6'4", 6'5", in height, 6'9", 6'10", wingspan, really plus wingspan. But you see the offensive numbers continue to get better every single year. And we're going to continue to showcase why he's so impactful on the defensive end and how he was able to perform on defense last year. But make sure you show some love to Haywood Highsmith. We're talking about him because we need to. Spam those double H's down in the comment section. HH for Haywood Highsmith. We can talk about how improved he is on a yearly basis offensively, but the real thing we need to bring up is how impactful he is on the defensive end because that is his calling card and that is how he gets paid in this league. And I look back at some stats from 23-24 and his defense was very, very solid. His defensive field goal percentage was 45%. He... On, as the closest defender, a lot of shooting percentage on three-pointers of 35.8, solid. Two-pointers, 50%, but that also accounts for him switching on the big men inside and them getting some good looks, and that just accounts for anything inside the two-point or in, in between the arc. So 50%, to me, honestly, is pretty good, and it had a defensive rating at 111.8. But the part that was so impressive to me is that he was able to take – the tough challenges. And he has always been someone that, for the Miami Heat, takes the toughest guy on the opposing team, and he is matched up against them just due to his size and to give Jimmy Butler time off, Caleb Martin time off. And here is how he fared against some really good players, man. The person that he guarded the most, and I sorted this, by the way, by minutes defending, he guarded Paolo Bancaro the most in isolation setting out of anyone in the NBA last year. 12 total minutes in the three games that they played, and he held them to 11 points on 4 of 18 shooting, which is 22.2%. 
that is elite. Some other names that are, are shocking to me. SGA, in the two games that they played the Thunder, that was Haywood Highsmith's main assignment. 12 points, 5 of 14 shooting, and 35% from the field. That is really good. But then the one that I think we really need to talk about here is Jason Tatum at the bottom of your screen. Only five minutes during the regular season. They only matched up in two games during the regular season. Postseason, different story. But he only had eight points. One of six shooting, which is 16.7% from the field. But in the postseason, and I was looking up the playoff isolation defensive stats too, he held Tatum to, I believe it was 30% from the field. Like, he did an excellent job on Jason Tatum. Highsmith is criminally underrated on the defensive end. Like, Heat fans, I think, understand how impactful he is and how good he is defensively. But the NBA fan and the casual NBA fan, one, might not even know who Haywood Highsmith is, and two, if they do, I don't think they realize how good he is as a defender and what his assignments are on a nightly basis for Eric Spolstra. When he comes in off the bench, his one goal is to defend the best wing or guard on the opposing team. That is not an easy thing to do, folks. The only people that give him trouble are quick, explosive, twitchy guards. Like, I'm not going to lie. Tyrese Maxey, I didn't put him up there. He was matched up with Maxey a lot last year. Maxey kind of shredded him. 57% from the field. Second, like, was one of the top leading scorers. So Highsmith does have that problem with quick, shifty guards, but it's also just not his natural position because he's a wing and a 6'5 guy. It's not easy to defend those quick, moving guards. And also, it's really not that hard to stop Tyrese Maxey, even if you're a really good defender like Highsmith is. More here coming up in just a second, but we do have a new sub battle. Month changes, and now we have a new opponent, which is the Bulls report. Patrick Seatman was talking some shit, folks. He was. We got to take him down. We're starting at zero subs of pop. Let's beat the Bulls report in our August sub battle. All right, let's transition a little bit to the offense because we've harped on the defense quite a bit here in the early portion of today's show. But I want to showcase this is the new uh, new age of basketball, folks. It's truly paint touches or it's three-point shots and now you might look at the shot chart and be like well this kind of reminds me of someone yeah 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 pj tucker yeah he him and tucker are very similar it comes from the same school there but you see as always light blue bad dark blue really really good so he's a good corner three-point shooter but you just simply don't see him take a lot of shots that are really outside the paint or at the three-point mark. So let's take a deeper look at the three-point shooting numbers for Highsmith a season ago because they're actually pretty solid. From the right corner, he shot 37.8%, which is a little bit below league average, but I also think he is a really good corner shooter. As you see from the left corner, he shot 47.8% from three. That is just ridiculously good. It is clear that he is a better th shooter from the left side of the floor because, well, one, that's where he is most efficient, and two, that's where he takes the most shots, 58 attempts from the left wing while only taking 11 at the top of the key, 40 from the right wing. So there's clear to me that Highsmith favors that left side of the floor and, at least last season, was a league average three-point shooter and above leave average three-point shooter, which is obviously displayed when he shot 40% from three. Like this has been a massive improvement for him, which we saw when we looked at his career stats earlier on, like he does not often get a lot of shot opportunities and score a lot of points, but he has been improving his three-point shot from 23, 33, now 40%. It's been a crazy improvement, man. Even though it's mostly as a stationary shooter and you are not going to expect him to go catch it off a pin down or catch it off a curl like Duncan Robinson or Tyler Hero and put it up over a defender. No, the only time he's taken three-point shots is because he was left open or someone helped or digged on Bam or Jimmy for a split second, kicked it out to Highsmith, and he let it fly. But Highsmith has definitely gotten better in that department. And one of the other things he developed was that little eight-foot shot. We mentioned the paint touches. If it's not a three-point shot, Heisman's either dunking the basketball because he's in that dunker spot off a of feed from Bam or Jimmy, or he's getting it, pump faking, getting his man to overcommit to him, taking one dribble and then stepping at the free throw line and kind of just that little push shot floater that Tyler Hero likes to do as well. That's what Highsmith has really developed last season that helped him increase his overall offensive game. But if we're looking towards the future and what we want Haywood Highsmith to do to become more of an impact player for Miami this upcoming season, to me, I need him to be an improved ball handler and a decision maker. 
too often during our watch parties this year, they'd give it to Haywood Highsmith with about eight or nine seconds left in the shot clock. And if he did not pull the three-point shot, then it was a disaster. It would either turn into a horrific shot, a turnover, or a shot clock violation. Highsmith needs to be more decisive this year. I think an improved handle could benefit him, potentially break down defenders. I'm not asking him to be an isolation scorer and give me 12 off the bench. It's not his role. It's not the type of player he is. But can you at least be competent where when you have the ball and you put it on the deck, I don't fear for my life because it's going to get turned over. I need that to be a little bit better. I need him to be a little better of a decision maker, crisp processor, and passer as well. Before we end today's video... Predict it for me. Haywood Highsmith will average blank points per game in 2024. Just remember, two points, four points, six points. Trent says eight points this year, but what say you down in the comment section? I do expect seven to eight points a game for Haywood Highsmith this year. Now, would it shock me if he's still at six? No, because he's still going to be the eighth, ninth man on his team and primarily a defender as his good role and what he needs to do first. But I do think he could be a guy who averages eight points a game, makes two threes a night, maybe one layup or a dunk, kind of in that rotation. Uh, I feel like that's very likely for him. And with Caleb Martin going off this bench, I think there's a role on this team for a scoring wing to come off that bench. Obviously, you no know, Hawkes is going to eat into that a little bit, but maybe Highsmith does as well, and he improves his points per game total. All right, make sure you are following me over on Twitter because we're talking Heat basketball every single day, folks. At Nick underscore Roloff is the handle. Go give me a follow. As always, I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Go Heat.